If you would like to know what that piece of carnival glass is worth, or perhaps why I bought 15 cans of broth, stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop and welcome to the winterized porch of the 1925 bungalow. Now, in today's video, we're going to go shopping. Oh, I maybe only have about 10 minutes worth of shopping footage, but you'll see everything that I purchased. Um, we'll come back here to the front porch and have a little review. I'll tell you about this piece of carnival glass and why do I have so many chance, cans of chicken broth? No sugar added applesauce. And instant mashed potatoes. Well, some of you have already figured it out. And some of you haven't. But you'll find out and much more. Now let's go shopping. Take a look at this. I just pulled it off the shelf. Now, I'm really good with identifying new carnival glass. At least I think I am. Like, well, that's not it. But I mean, you know the Indiana glass that they remade in the 60s and 70s? I am really unfamiliar with this. I'm going to take a chance. Uh, but then again, it's pretty enough and unusual enough. I'm going to go ahead and do the six bucks on it. I don't know that pattern. It... I'm really on the fence with this, but we'll find out. It's either really, really rare and valuable, or it's a, you know, piece of, hello. Or it's a piece of 1970s glass. I don't know, we'll find out. That's a really pretty piece of made in Japan, isn't it? Hand painted. Um, so, no secret. It doesn't say, uh, let's turn it upside down. It doesn't say Nippon. I know it's blurry for, for you. It just simply says Japan. That means we can date the piece. Now, sadly, it's been smashed. The handle on the top there is, was broken and re-glued. That's okay if you want a piece that's pretty heavily damaged. I think I'll pass. Just reminding you that Japan appears after 1921. Uh, from 1891 to 1921, items were marked Nippon. And then after that, 19, uh, uh, from 1921 forward, we see Japan until the... Uh, oh, and there it's signed by somebody who uh, did the decorating. I don't know if they dated it or not. Did they date it? I think they did. It looks like 1960, does it say 1968? I can't tell. It's kind of hard, but pretty. It's just that it's too damaged for me. Hi kitty, or whatever that thing is. It certainly is difficult to walk past a piece of fry glass. And there it is, a wonderful covered casserole. Missing its lid, well, we can't have everything. Fry glass is almost, I don't think I've ever found a piece that's not marked. And if we look inside, we'll see the patent dates here. I think the latest patent date you'll see on there is 1919. The first one is May the something, 1917, and then May of 1919. It's $5. I may purchase it and I might not. I really would like to have the lid with it. Um, but I'm a sucker for this phosphorescent fry glass. So you see it's going down into the cart. I'm in the clear glass aisle and I've already looked up and down. I came around here to zip around place my cart back and happen to spy that one piece of fry glass. Uh, so I'll just do a little more looking around, but I don't think I'm going to be making any other purchases in here today. Uh, but still, 
Beautiful crystal glass, clear glass. You know I love this aisle. It's one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hello, Fenton. Oh, for pity's sake, how many of you immediately either think of your grandmother or shopping at the church bazaar? <laughs> oh, the good old Christmas church bazaar. <sighs> Safety pin art. I don't think I'm going to buy that. I appreciate it, sort of. <gasps> but I am going to buy these. Now, I think this is a first on the old curiosity shop. Well, actually, you know, I bought my first fairy lamp a couple weeks ago, and I think I'm going to buy my first Tupperware. $4 for these little plastic tumblers. I think that someone had these in my childhood. It wasn't at my house, but I'm sure I grew up drinking out of these and they look like they're in good condition and I don't know how old they are. They do say Tupperware, so I'm going to buy them. And then I'll show you out in the car. I'm a sucker for these wooden boxes as well from the 30s. And I found a really nice one, I think. So we'll take a look at it outside. Oh, are these old? I don't think so, but let's look. Well, drat, drat, drat. You've been watching me long enough to know you know I've been collecting these 1920s candy jars for quite a while. And you know that's the bottom of a 1920s candy jar missing its top. Ah. So I'm not going to pay $5.50 for it. It's pretty. Sure do wish it still had its top. Um, it's painted, so it's not custard glass. That won't glow under a black light. That's, it. that's that um, enamel that was put on these and so typically done in the 1920s and early 30s and the lid is missing. And I'm sure that that lid isn't around here priced separately. So you just have to say, oh well. And look at this piece way back here. It's got this crackly, I know it's not old. What does it say? Patent, well, no, wait a minute now. That's got that, what's, Let's see here. Hold on. Pat patent number. Well, there is a patent number. We could look it up. I don't feel like it. <laughs> Sometimes you just you're not in the mood. It was all right. And uh, so now I'm still now just a reminder, especially if you're new to this channel. Uh, <clears throat> I specialize in antiques and items really only made up into about the early 1950s. And so you will see me walk by a whole bunch of things that I don't pay any attention to. Um, I might be walking by something that's worth $150 and that's okay with me. I, I'm not out to just buy and resell anything. If that were the case, I'd be buying and reselling those medical supplies over there. No, that's no good. Um, and so, uh, just so you know, I don't want people getting frustrated. Oh, look at that Fitz and Floyd or whatever it is. You didn't pick it up. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just not my area. So I like this Anchor Hocking Mid-Century Vase for $4.50 in red. I do find quite a few of those. So yeah, um, my eye is trained to looking at things made from 1950 and before. And that, you know, doesn't mean everything. There is a missing its lid. 1930s Majolica glaze, Japan, sugar bowl, no lid. Rats. Ha ha ha. Now, that's the reason why we get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's the reason why you want to be the first one in the parking lot. Oh, happy day. Look at that. That's a nice one. A marigold iridescent swung vase. Mm-hmm. Northwood. I don't know. Find out when I get home. 
Can you believe it? And it's sitting back here with the lamps. Maybe the, maybe somebody actually thought it was a lamp part. Who knows? People pick things up and set things down all the time in the wrong spot. Ooh, what a good start. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I'll tell you about that in the car as well. All right, all right, all right. I better hang around over here in the lamp department. Oh golly, what hotel went out of business? Are those hotel lamps? Look at those things. You like them? Mmm. That's kind of rough. I don't know much about golf clubs, but I think they have some value. Let's go see if there's any uh, percolators over here in the land of the misfit crock pots and the poor old toasters. Oh, I don't see any. Well, let's go look a little bit closer. Uh, owner of a lonely heart. Remember that song? Okay, spread out here on top of my winter coat, which um, is not quite chilly enough to have on at the moment, although it was this morning. Uh, you don't always have to know the patterns, uh, but if you recognize depression glass and not the uh, stuff that's being made in France today, which looks a lot like it, you can, uh, you know, you can go ahead and pick these up. Now, this is Dogwood by Macbeth Evans. It's an early pattern, the early 30s. It was $3, and I actually got uh, a discount on this today, 15% off of that. Uh, and, and the Dogwood pattern by Macbeth Evans is not one that I see every day or every other day. Another set of uh, pretty glass candlesticks. These are old quality glass, fire polished, and they're uh, wheel cut. See, this is cut in there, not etched. Similar to ones I had before, a little smaller. And the pattern goes, a uh, simple flower that goes around the sides. But this, these are nice. And then, of course, you know, you're probably tired of hearing me say it. Yep, I'm putting together a small collection of Anchor Hawking Miss America. Mm hmm. And for three dollars, I now have the little serving platter, which could be f for anything. Okay, so that's for future use for myself. And I just. Well, A OK, I'm back with the shopping trip. Uh, sitting here in my truck outside of the Goodwill, let me show you what I have. You know I was going to buy that fry glass bowl, even without the lid. Had to get, just had to do it. Now, set that up there, and then I'll show you this glass candlestick. You know I had a pair of these about a year ago, maybe not a full year ago, and I sold them. And I did find out what they were at that time. And I don't remember. I'll look them up again. It won't matter. Um, I want to say this was a really good piece of Indiana glass. Um, dating, obviously, to the Art Deco era. Now, this time there was only one. Um, and I wasn't going to purchase it, but um, I decided I would. I really like that design. Uh, perhaps the person to whom I sold the other two pair would like a third, so you could have six candles. I don't know. But that's a pretty nice piece of uh, Art Deco style glass. And then, um, just now in this thrift store, these are made in the USA. And anybody my age is going to remember these. Uh, Tupperware tumblers. I paid $3.99. They're in excellent condition. I believe this might be almost my first Tupperware purchase. I may just keep these to throw around the house, you know, that kind of thing. But um, uh, I know Tupperware has a presence online and they, these things might sell for 20 bucks. I don't know, but I was just in the mood. I'm always in the mood for incandescent Christmas lights, not LED. No, 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 not for me. <laughs> and I was able to buy these. Were originally sold at Woolworths. Mm-hmm. For a dollar sixty-nine each. 
So I have 25 light bulbs. I always need these as replacements. And I paid $3 because these are the kind of light bulbs that I do use on my uh, in my Christmas decorating. And then I don't think I can show you that mirror that's kind of difficult to get to. I love a 1930s wooden cedar dresser box. This one I've never seen before with these Tootsie Rolls on the side. Very deco. And of course, I love the ships at sea on the front. It's a small one, very masculine, and I may end up keeping this myself and having it on the top of my dresser. My father had something like this when I was a kid. I don't know what happened. Well, no, I guess I don't know what happened to that. But um, and he would keep all of his little, you know, masculine accoutrements in it. A money clip, a tie bar, some cuff links. Mm, his wedding ring when he took it off, a pinky ring, just other little things. He didn't really have jewelry, jewel, jewelry, jewelry in here. Oh my word, I think is a Royal Hager, but it needs to be cleaned. Couldn't say no to this. Somebody will flip over that. Yeah, that nice big Royal Hager piece from the, what, 60s? Are you cracked? Oh, fiddlesticks, you might have a crack in you. Well, if you do, you are a hairline crack. No. Yeah, I think you might have a little hairline crack at the top. Um, I think that you do. Uh, oh well, I didn't see that in the store. That might have been a waste of money, but this was not. Uh, now, I already figured out what it is, but I have to tell you that uh, I certainly am not against using... Uh, the, the internet sources to help you, especially when you're out. But, you know, what I like to do is, rather than immediately Google imaging it, um, I like to st go stand aside, study the piece. You know, you can't really develop your own expertise if you're just Googling everything. I wanted to really study it, see if it was signed, um, take a look at the iridescence, the quality of it. Um, look at the base and see if I could find any wear, you know, and really use my own sense of dis discernment and knowledge to, to, to determine whether or not I think it's an old piece of carnival glass or a piece made in the 1960s or 70s. That 60s and 70s carnival glass I'm not a huge fan of some of the design is a little clumpy clumpy dumpy it just doesn't have the same quality as the antique carnival and but I never see plates now this is called a plate although you wouldn't eat off of this and it's not like a flat dinner plate carnival glass plates when you find them are usually uh, have higher value than nappies and bowls and little candy dishes and bonbons and that kind of thing. So I kept looking at it and I said, okay, I, mm, I think this is an antique one. It's not signed. So I did purchase it and bring it, get it into the car. And then I did search around a little bit to try to find it on the internet. And I did, and it's a piece of Northwood and it is a poppy. It is a plate. And these came in several different colors. This is uh, somewhat harder to find and valuable. This would sell anywhere between, oh, 150. Some of them sell up to 500, depending on the color. Now we would go, we would call this green and we always look at carnival glass and we look at the base color of the glass, uh, the part of the glass that is uniridized hasn't been sprayed and it's green. The piece is in excellent condition. Now, 
what some folks might do is they might look it up and say, oh, no, 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 Scott, I saw one that sold for $500. Well, you've got to keep in mind that condition, 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 color, color, color. Yeah. And so uh, you also may have two collectors that have every color except green and they have deep pockets and they fight over each other and you may have an exorbitant price which is an outlier so i'm very conservative i've seen uh there are auction records of these in various colors and they have sold anywhere from 150 dollars up to 500 but again based upon the color and the and how beautiful the iridescence is this one should do well this one should be at least in the 150 dollars range um green is desirable and there is a very nice iridescence on it they don't all come out the same so this is definitely a score unmarked northwood their poppy plate i don't know the years of manufacture but we're certainly somewhere between 1910 to 1920 something like that so this was a really thrill this was the best find of the day in terms of monetary value no doubt and just for kicks and jollies as we say here are a few examples of uh, plates the same as mine uh, that have recently sold this is within the last 90 days on eBay. This is just one auction site. I do check others, but uh, eBay happens to be the largest. And we can see here that uh, this one, uh, is this one in ice blue? They don't say what color it is. It appears to be either maybe purple or ice blue. Uh, and it sold, they were asking $399 someone made an offer there's a website you can go to to find out exactly what uh, the auction realized and eh, i don't mess with it but it sold for something less than 399 dollars that example and it was in good condition and then here's another example uh this one says uh, carnival lovely northwood purple poppy show plate with the reed exterior that one we see sold for um, $175. Now that, that might have been a buy it now. I'd have to look again and see if they listed it as a buy it now or if they uh, uh, sold it at auction. So there it is in purple. Okay. Again, good condition. And now let's move on to another example. And another example, Antique Northwood Poppy Show Carnival. Uh, glass plate purple. They were asking $595 and they took an offer. So it looks like all three of, the ex three of these examples that we just looked at had price set prices and they asked folks to make offers uh, rather than sell at auction so that's one way to sell now let's take a look at my example well not mine but finally here's one in green now you'll notice this one has not sold the seller and oh boy i hope you get it $2,999.99. Well, I don't know. Uh, that's not my strategy for selling an item, but what works for one may not work for another. You can see that this particular piece is sitting there, and that is the asking price. A lot of folks make a mistake and they say, Oh, 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 my plate is worth $3,000. Mmm. Anyway, I'll be placing mine up for auction. That's right. And let the bids take it where it may. That's my style. That's how I do it. And it's different for everyone. But I just thought you might like to see a few examples. It's a 
pretty plate and I'm really excited that I found it today. But for me, I think this is charming and I'll clean it up and put a little lemon oil on it and probably be using it on my dresser to toss my watch and ring uh, in at the end of the day. <laughs> I guess that's it. Oh, let me get this fry glass off of the dashboard before it goes flying. There's nothing worse than going down 295 and have flying fry glass in your car. Okay, let's put this back here. And then I think I'm off, I'm not sure where. I'm going to sip this iced coffee. I'm not using a straw, why not? I'll tell you in a second. Because I had a tooth pulled, ugh, oy. I do remember having one wisdom tooth taken out in my 20s. I don't really remember how traumatic it was, but I had an old silver filling that was put in probably when I was about 20 years old in a molar, you know, all the way in the back of my head by old doctor, hardly ever used Novocaine. I can't remember. I'm not going to tell you what his name was, but um, things used to hurt a lot more, it seems, when you went to the dentist. 35 years ago. Anyway, this old silver filling finally decided to jump out of my tooth, which it did. And then I found out the tooth was actually cracked. So, uh, wasn't anything we could do, but pull it, pull it. They did. Um, apparently sometimes they come out very easily and sometimes they don't. And of course, lucky me, this one did not want to come out easily. So they had to cut it in half and pull it out root by root. <laughs> so this is day three. I've gone from broth to jello uh, to pudding cups. <laughs> I think I've lost two pounds. And even though this is iced coffee, it's not that cold and I'm sipping on it. So, yep, it's going to take a while for that hole in the back of my head to close up, but no solid foods. You've all had teeth pulled before, I suppose. And um, at least it should be all healed up and in time for my Christmas ham. How about that? I think we're going to go to one more thrift store. And uh, if we have any big surprises, you'll be the first to know. So stay tuned. Well, I'm excited to tell you I made a pit stop at the hardware store and a really nice lady is cutting a piece of glass for me. Do you remember last April when I was doing my big tablecloth sale and one of my porch storm doors came crashing down and the glass went everywhere? Well, I've never had it replaced. But now that it's getting chilly, I need to be able to put those storm doors down and keep that front porch as warm as I can. So hopefully we'll have a nice piece of glass and maybe I won't have to bring my plants in. I'm still debating that. That's right, I am fully winterized. Now, as you may know, when this house was built, this was an open front porch. And at some time, oh, I guess in the 1960s, uh, screens and glass windows, storm windows, were put in on three sides. And so in the summertime, it's the old fashioned way you take out the storm windows and put the screens in. And I've finally gotten around to, to taking all my screens out, which I should have done by now and I've got all the glass windows in place. That means that when the sun comes up in the morning, I get all that beautiful morning sun and I get a little bit of late afternoon sun. So it does warm up in here. Now we're gonna to have to experiment with the plants. So far, they're doing very well. You can't see them. I keep them watered. We've had lots of frost. Um, but we haven't had bone chilling cold, of course. I think they're gonna be okay through December. We may have to bring them in in January and February, but I will monitor the temperatures out here. I know what these plants like and what they don't like. And so it's just going to be an experiment this winter. I'd prefer to keep the plants out here rather than, it's just easier to, especially the big old ferns over there, you know, they drop all over the place. I'm having some hot chocolate, not terribly hot, and you know why now, uh, out of my Victor mug from the 1940s. Let's try some. 
Mm-mm-mm. It's just the right temperature. Oh, I hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving. I certainly did. All right. Well, I'm going to put that down and show you a few other things that you didn't see in the shopping video, but I've got to brag just one more time. One more time. Ooh, I'm so excited. I will be placing this piece on eBay if anyone is a carnival glass collector. And I will put a starting bid probably of like $99. Now, people say, oh, you should see what something is, you know, well, remember the asking price. There are examples on eBay and they're asking 300, 400, 250. And that's not what they're selling for. That's what they're sitting there for. So I like to just look, I paid six bucks for it. I'm probably going to put $99 as an opening bid and let the market take it where it may. If it sells for $99, I'm thrilled. If it goes up to $250, I'll do a little happy dance. <laughs> but um, that's kind of the way, you know, I'm in the business. Um, make your money, buy it, sell it. It's a good piece, excellent condition. Maybe somebody can snag it for $99 and get a really good um, bargain. We'll see. But we'll try to get that listed perhaps even later today. I just had to show off with that. Look at this. This came from an antiques store, not an antique store, right? The store wasn't an antique, but the items in it were. And there comes my squirrel. You want a peanut? Now, you're gonna have to wait. Here he comes. Is that the one with one eye? Wait a minute, let me go. If that's the one with one eye, it's a girl and she knows me. She'll come right up to me. Uh, if that's my one-eyed squirrel, let me give her a peanut. She'll, hold on, I'll be right back. She'll get more than one peanut. Okay, that was my one-eyed squirrel and she's very happy right now because I gave her about 10 or 15 peanuts and she's down there under the tree. Uh, as you can see now, excuse me, that afternoon sun is coming around uh, the back side of the house and I don't know how well you can see me, but take a look at this. In an antique store, antiques store, I saw this. Now the lid was black and I cleaned it when I got home. When I cleaned it and I got home, I found it. It's sterling, so it is marked sterling. The glass is absolutely beautiful. I'll bet my bottom dollar it's unmarked high Z. It's etched. It's the size of a footed tumbler. And then, you know, I've never seen one with a sterling silver lid. So I got to thinking, my gosh, why would a tumbler have a uh, sterling silver lid? Was it for liturgical use? Did this hold communion wine or something? I don't know. Anyway, I think it's just a very small candy dish. Uh, the candy dishes are usually a lot bigger than this, but... Um, you know, I, unless anyone has uh, some other knowledge, I think it's just a nice little small candy dish. Um, you'll see people say apothecary jar and all of that. Um, I don't think it was for jam or jelly. There's no place in the lid for uh, a spoon to go in. I think it's just a really nice little candy jar, you know, for mints or whatnot. Anyway, that's what I'm going to use it for, and I think it's beautiful. So, yeah, I don't know anything else other than that. We'll call it it. We'll call it a candy jar. We'll call it a candy jar. I got six of these. They look so 1930s. Haven't looked them up yet. No, have not. But isn't that deco? Yeah. Great condition. Six, the six of these. And uh, that's good glass. So those will be nice for Christmas time. We'll see. I was thrilled. I got a set of, did I get six or eight? You know it. Anchor Hawking Charm. And I always say Delphite when I'm supposed to say Azurite, and I always say Azurite when I'm supposed to say Delphite. So we'll say Paldor Blue. <laughs> um, luncheon plates. Uh, 
eight inch luncheon plates in the charm pattern. And this is in their, in their Delphi blue color. Uh, cups and saucers, creams and sugars. You can't get a whole lot more than that. It wasn't an extensive line, but the mid-century folk love this. You'll find it in Royal Ruby Red. You'll find it in uh, Forest Green. You'll find it in Jadeite. And it was a delight to find these plates in the blue color. Oh, I love these Hazel Atlas. I think peanut butter or sour cream or something came in these. Um, these are one pint jars. And uh, so this is still in the 50s because it's still marked Hazel Atlas before Continental Can got a hold of the company, right? And then, so uh, not Hazelware, but uh, Hazel Atlas. So early 50s, 52, I forget what year Continental Can got a hold of, um, took ownership of Hazel Atlas, but sometime in the mid 50s. So good condition. We have the, that one. Aren't these just charming? These, that's only one. Oh, one is good. <laughs> Two is even better. Oh, the sunlight is behind me. I should be turned this way so you can really see them. American made, no doubt, unmarked. Beautiful pottery horns, um, uh, cornucopia horns, and just the pair is fantastic. Look at the beautiful colors. Even though, I don't know, you know, not really autumn flowers, but just the soft palette on this gives me a feel of wanting to decorate with these, maybe on the mantle in, in the autumn season. And I we think of this uh, horn of plenty, you know, in that season as well, at least I do. So I'm on the fence about these, meaning whether I'm gonna keep them or not, boy. This is not the Biltmore. I can tell you that, so you can only have keep so much. Ooh. Oh, let's do this. Two patterns that I can never, ever, in my pea brain, get straight is Oyster and Pearl and another pattern called Columbia. I cannot, and I just need to study them. It's not a big deal. This is one or the other, <laughs> Oyster and Pearl or Columbia. Look at this beautiful red glass. A lot of you who know your patterns are going to know it right away. It's just one of those patterns that always bugs me. I think it's Oyster and Pearl, possibly by Hawking. I got to go look it up. There is the beautiful console. There's the beautiful serving bowl, fruit bowl, whatever you'd like it to be. A little chip, one little ooh, 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 right there. I'm not worried about it because I'm thrilled it has its big underpants with it. Ha ha, you said underpants. Look at that. How about that on your Christmas table? Let's get a, uh, let's get the, let's get, what am I trying to say? Let's get the bowl on top of it. There we have it. All right. What? You said you won't go until you get some. Well, there's your figgy pudding right there. So have some and then you can <laughs> have your fill. I love it. All right, put that on the floor. Now, Macbeth Evans. Oh, come here to me. I was, I've just been rocking the Casbah here to quote another 80s tune. Serving bowl and platter. Right? Is this American Sweetheart? It is Macbeth Evans' pink depression glass. I see it a lot in that opalescent, uh, not Monax. Oh, anyway, you know what I mean. But here it is in pink. There's the underplate. This is a 30s pattern. Yeah. And a serving bowl platter to go with it. <laughs> Thrift stores, right here in Jersey. Oh dear. I had such a nice time in Manhattan. The show was fantastic. I had a good time with a friend of mine I hadn't seen in a while. 
I have a little video, but I'm realizing now it's almost more of a, how do you take the train from Jersey to Philly and then the bus or the train from Philly to Manhattan and then, so it's more how you maneuver the trains, the buses and the subways through three different states <laughs> to get to Manhattan. Then you really don't see a whole lot because you can't really film the show. I was only there for 24 hours and um, because of the tooth extraction, which you now know about, um, I had broth and I think the next morning I gummed some uh, uh, lightly scrambled eggs. So it wasn't a major trip. It was really just to uh, see the show and you can't really, you can't film the show off Broadway, but I did a little travel log anyway. You might be interested just to see how um, I, I can drive. I've driven in Manhattan. I used to know somebody in Brooklyn and, and drove many times, but there are so many different ways. Now I'm getting off topic. There's so many different ways to get to Manhattan from New Jersey, and it's two hours from where I am if you don't take the speed train. Uh, and so, you know, there's, anyway, there's a million different ways to get to Manhattan from here. So that video will come out as soon as I get it all together. Now, I have two nasty, dirty salt and pepper shakers that have to be cleaned, but aren't they, aren't they nice? Don't these look, these look Edwardian? Paid $1.99 each. The lids are good. These are old, 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 old. You got a lot of salt and pepper in there. All right. Now, I also, let's do that last. Let's do this. I haven't taken this out of the bag yet. You're probably gonna know what it is as soon as I get it, as soon as I get her out of this bag. Let's get her out of there. And I, oh, what happened to you? Oh, I really bought her for sympathy. Because she ain't supposed to have that socket sticking out of the top of her head. But there isn't a whole lot we can do about it now. Um, yeah, I paid $6 and it's got damage and it has been altered and it's just a piece of cheap old pop metal. And it is, I don't want to take that call, so get away. It is a clock top -er. All right. See, they put these big uh, foam uh, things on the store. I don't know why they do that. Um, at some point, someone took... Is this Diana? Who is she? She's either a Greek or a Roman. I don't know, but she's playing... A, she, I guess she got disgusted with her harp or her liar, because someone stuck a, a socket on her head. Now, um, clock toppers, these would sit on top of the black mantle clocks, you know, like the one I got right in there, the one that's been in my family since it was new, sitting on my mantelpiece. And um, it probably had a clock topper like this on it. You would get all types of figures, um, conquistadors, and I think there's Shakespeare, and uh, there's always somebody on a horse, and there's always some Greek or Roman or somebody, you know, half clad. Oh, she's, she's fully dressed. Oh, she's got a star on her head. Who is she? She has a little bit of her patina left on her, you can see. And she's just inexpensive pot metal. These were not uh, pricey. And uh, middle class folks who could afford a mantle clock would buy these and uh, put them on top of their clocks. Because you know, back in those days, you didn't. If you had a flat surface, you had to put something on it. What am I do? What am I? What am I going to do with her? Well, I could just patch the hole in her head. Nobody would really see it. Maybe I'll do that and stick her on my mantle clock. Put her back the way she was supposed to be. Or I could just, since the damage has been done, I could just, you know, leave her as a lamp, rewire her, put a big old fringe lampshade on her. I don't know what I'm going to do with her yet, but. There she is, all right? So we, we'll fiddle with her later. Let's take a look at what's in this box and then we'll do the records. I have to tell you that I purchased this box and someone made these for 
there probably for their child, and I imagine it was someone who was crafty, ouch, in the garage. This is folk art at its best. They're a little crude, a little rough around the edges, right? Not finally done, but you think about someone who needed to make models for a little train set, probably for a child, and this is exactly what they've done. These are, <laughs> these are made of metal, and they've gone and glued in the little you know, those little, I guess it's not glassine. I don't know what you call that little cellophane. You know, that little stuff that was on the little Japan, the little putz houses. And they're always broken because light bulbs always get shoved through them. But someone has made these out of very heavy steel plates. And they've been uh, s soldered together. In, yeah, they've been soldered together, painted, and flocked with sand. And so there's one little house. Here's another one. I don't know if this was supposed to be a barn. And look, that's some kind of a, um, uh, a key. You see, for, for not a clock, that's not a clock key, but it's something that he has stuck on there as the, see? Look at this, look how heavily they're made. Heavily made it is. I'm gonna sell these, I won't need them. Here's another little, almost like a um, barn, farm building. And you can see in here as well, he's glued on. I say he, I'm assuming. Look at the church. Now this is folk art. And uh, he's even gone and wired himself up a little light bulb in there so the church can be lit. You see that? So this looks like small model train. Mm -hmm. I'll keep all of these together. I'll sell them all together. I wouldn't think of breaking it up. And then here's another. Look at the chimney. See that? And the, um, I think you can replace these little cellophane paper things. Look at this. <laughs> with, the, with the antenna or the electric uh, pole on the side. That has to be, and then the last one, you can count how many there were. Look at that little house. You know what? I would barely even, if these were mine, I would take a damp sponge, just get any top layer of dirt off. I wouldn't scrub them. I wouldn't repaint them. I might not even replace if the little, if the little, see, this is okay. And you wouldn't need electric. You put your little flickering battery candles in there and you would have a charming little, and they're small, you know, you can see how small they are. You wouldn't have to light this up with electricity or use it as a train. So that's folk art. And then look what else. I couldn't believe these two pieces. He also, he, I'm saying he, made two, uh, like, uh, city skyscrapers. Now, these are looking very 1930s. I don't know if this set goes back that far, but he's made himself a clock tower. Look at this. With the clock all around it. What time is it? It's uh, 7 o'clock. And then it's flocked. And there's the little uh, cellophane in there, so it will light up in different colors. There's red and white and green. And then standing next to it is a very New York City looking um, skyscraper. So 
see? And this one will be all different colors when it's lit up. Oh, I can't wait. Because the paper, he's glued different. See, there's orange, and then there's some pink, and then there's yellow at the top. So that'll, this will all be different colors as it, as it gets lit up. Let me check on my squirrel. All right, don't eat too many. Mm -hmm. Eat one, hide one, eat one, hide one. So I don't know if I want to include the skyscrapers with the, I guess I should keep it all together. You think keep the skyscrapers together with the with a little village. The scale is different. I don't know. We'll see. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up, but I have some records to show you. Oh, listen. Okay, you can't hear it, because now I've got the windows. I can hear it. She's out there squawking, and that means she sees the cat. Did you get up on your, there she is. I need to get my camera and film her. Let me see if I can get her. When she sees the cat, they have this warning set. Let's see if I can get her, hold on. All right, she's sitting right there. She stopped squawking, but she's not gonna come back down for a peanut until that cat gets out of the way. Then she'll come back down. All right, squirrel, I've got to finish my movie. Say hello. Hello. Jersey squirrel, Jersey squirrel. Jersey squirrels don't pump gas. And then finally, the first thing that I really started collecting on my own was as a teenager, and they were 70 RPM records that uh, I found in my paternal grandparents' attic, they had a big walk-up attic, which was actually my father's bedroom, or the, a room he used as his bedroom as a boy, and it was filled. Of course, after my father was old enough and got out of there, um, it just, it had antique furniture and trunks and boxes and just you name it. So there was a whole stack of old 78 RPMs excuse me, some of them going way back into the 1920s. And uh, I have them, but when I find 78s in good condition, I do still purchase them. Even if there are, they are some that I already have, I'm always looking for ones in better condition. So we'll go through just a few of them. I did a uh, famous recording here, My Blue Heaven by Gene Austin. Everybody knows this, and this one is in mint condition, which is fantastic. The VE stands for Victor Electric. That's a scroll label. And uh, Gene Austin wasn't the first to record My Blue Heaven. It was recorded several times before him, but it was his rendition that was the big hit. They took the tempo down. They put that beautiful cello solo in there. And it was just a combination of his very soft crooning that really hit with the public. This was a big hit around the time this house was built. Yes, then we've got Eddie Cantor, uh, Eddie Cantor's Tips on the Stock Market. This is fantastic and it's in excellent condition as well. My wife's on a diet. We can't listen to any of these today, but some other time. I've got a feeling I'm falling. Nick Lucas, who was a great ukulele player. Colette. Down the Field March, played by Lieutenant Francis Sutherland and his 7th Regiment Band and the Flag of Victory on an old vocalion. Look at that pretty label there. The World's Progress March on vocalion and the Baltimore Centennial March. Okay. Look how, look how great con the condition is. These records are a hundred, a hundred and more years old. Cliff Edwards singing, Don't Be Angry With Me. It says under there, Ukulele Ike. Cliff Edwards also, um, the voice of Jiminy Cricket. That's right. 
McCushla. Now, not John McCormick, but we do have uh, Colin O'Moore, tenor with male trio and orchestra, and also My Wild Irish, Irish Rose, and McCushla, McCushla. I prefer John McCormick, but he's probably okay. I Don't Mind Being All Alone by Kitty O'Connell, the girl baritone. All right, I never knew what the moonlight could do. Well, honey, you ain't been out on my front porch, have you? So we'll play that. That's an electrical recording by Columbia. That label dates it uh, Viva Tonal. That's going to be sometime after 1925, but probably before 1930. Here's a Yiddish comedy. I love these, and this is all written out in Hebrew, so I can't read it. Uh, 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 I'm just gonna have to play it. It's probably, it's probably in Yiddish. Gus Goldstein duet, yeah. Oh, Mendel, oh, it is in Yiddish. It's called Mendel and Yenta Become Grandparents. This is gonna be hilarious. Now, this is at a time when, Ooh, we cringe today. Um, we come a long way since these days, but um, we all know we all know about the humor and uh, different uh, ethnicities and, and and so forth were really poked at on a lot of these old records, and people sat back and laughed at it, and it was supposed to be funny. So you know, that's a time. That was the time. But, so it's probably very stereotypical. The other one is called uh, Yentl Goes to Borrow Money. Yeah, so see, there. Anyway. And then on the Jewel label, which is a dime store, what we call a dime store label, a cheap label, we have um, I'll Always Take Care of You by the Tennessee Happy Boys, whoever that was. Um, that you would get pseudonyms all, all the time you, if you were under contract. Let's say, um, oh, let's say that Ted Lewis and his orchestra was under contract with Columbia. Well, he could still record for other companies, but he couldn't use his own name. So they would make names up. You know, um, the, 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 the city slicker pot lickers, and you know, they would just come up with names, Who, you know, the Whoopi Fizz Brigade, and it could be Jack Teagarden and Benny Goodman, but they're under contract with some other company, so it says the Whoopi Fizz False Tooth Brigade or whatever. So all of these are from the 1920s, and we'll fiddle with those later. Ah, okay, well, I guess this has been a really long video, and I hope you, sometimes it's okay to enjoy uh, somewhat of a, of a confusing um, editing. Now, I know that one marigold vase you've already seen, so that little snippet was maybe a week old, but I stuck it in here anyway. Well, I've got things to do, and so do you. So I'll say thank you for watching. What did you like? Uh, what did you think was the most charming? Are you excited tonight? I'm excited tonight that I'm having something semi-solid. And we'll get there. Okay, that's it. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now. Slow down. This is a residential area.